purpose of this YouTube is to show you how to set the parameters for a histogram of one quantitative variable, which in this case is the cost per ounce of various cereals. The first thing to do is to go to insert and then we want pivot table. Um, I'm going to put everything on a new worksheet so that it doesn't get cluttered up. So go then go OK. Now on this side here, on the right hand side, we have the different variables. So this is the column headings from the data that we had. We are going to use one quantitative variable to make a histogram, which is cost per ounce. So drag cost per ounce down to row labels. And we see on the left the beginning of a some sort of a tabulation. So that are the categories that Excel has found. Now take one variable, it doesn't matter, but take cost per ounce down to values. We need something in values. And now it's counted. So between 0.09 to 0.12, there are four in that class. Make sure this says count here and not sum. If it says sum, go like this. Click on the little corner, go to value field settings, and a dialog box comes up. Change it from sum to count. Count is what we want. Now, what we're going to do is to group these together so that we can form a histogram. So in the data here, move your cursor to the left where the groups are. Then right click and go down to group. A dialog box comes up. Change it to starting from zero. It may be something different in whatever different setting is. Now the largest one that we've got is 0.27 in fact. So change it to 0 0.3. Now by, by is the class width. Let's try it at 0 0.01. So it's going to do it every 0 0.01 of a dollar per ounce. That's what that means. Then click on OK. Now we have one, two, three, four, a large number of different uh, classes. So let's make a histogram with that and see what happens. Highlight the data, then go back to insert, column, and then we want the first on the left. And we get, this is like a bar chart. Now we need to turn that into a histogram, because remember histogram, all of the vertical bars here should be adjacent, they should be touching each other. So move up to here. You see this little corner? The one on the bottom here. Click on that and we want number 8, layout number 8, which is for histograms. Click on that and it changes into uh, more what you more like see as a histogram. So you can change the title, serial costs, uh, it doesn't matter really, as long as it don't leave it as what it was, costs. And then on the left hand side here, we've got to put something that we can, we know what it is. And in fact, what it is, is the count, isn't it? So we are counting how many there were in each class. So it's a count. It's not a relative frequency or anything like that. It's a count. So that means that there were two in the class between 0.1 and 0.11. Now let's change the the grouping to something smaller because this isn't really showing us too much. So go back here, go back to group. Let's change it to 0.04. Now we have something that looks a little bit more interesting. Uh, we can see that the distribution is skewed to the right. So most people buy cereals that cost between 0.12 and 0.16. And then you see the, the class size is 0.4 up to 
0.28. Let's change it again. This time we'll change it to 0.3. Now we have something a little bit more interesting. There's, if you look at the distribution here, if you were to just cut off this part here above 0.24, you would see that it looks a bit like a normal distribution with most of the serials costing between 0.15 and 0.18. We have some outliers on the extreme right here. These are the most expensive ones. There's very few of them. But we could say that those might be the luxury brands, which cost a lot more than the rest. So try to keep changing this class width so that you can see the distribution changing and also understand what that means. Thank you.